Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be doing a bit of uh, setup for autonomous flight mode. So this is things like loiter, return to launch, circle. So when you first, uh, if you tried this just straight out of the box, it probably won't work very well because you need to do a few things. You need to calibrate the magna magnometer under load because when the motor run, it creates current, which has an effect on the magnetic field of the aircraft and this can confuse a flight controller so basically what you need to do is you need to tip, do a little uh, calibration so that the flight controller can learn how much distortion is there is in this field uh, at certain uh, motor settings so we're just going to go through that first uh, today but first we need to calibrate the um, the power module to make sure that it's actually reading the correct voltage and current. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to use a watt meter. You could use a multimeter or a, a clamp meter but that's a bit harder. These are only a few quid off eBay and compared about four quid for mine. So we're just first of all we're going to uh, plug the battery in, fire up mission planner and just uh, calibrate everything. So I'll see you back at the laptop. So what we're going to be doing today is going to be running the motors up. But what we want to do is we want them to actually force the copter down and not take off. So what we actually do is we take off each motor, uh, each propeller, and rotate it up, turn it upside down. So turn it upside down, and then move it round one position. And you do all the rest. So I just work in a clockwise position and move every prop round one position. Remember your left hand threads as well on your front front, uh, left and rear, right. So what this will do now is when you apply power, it'll force the quadcopter into the table so that you can do the test with the, the current the current draw of the uh, motors. So you want to plug in your battery, like so. Start a mission planner. I'm not going to go through starting up mission planner again, it's pretty self explanatory. Connect to your copter and then we're going to go to uh, initial setup, optional hardware, battery monitor. Okay, I'm just check that I'm recording. Yeah. So here you can see a measured voltage, so the actual voltage, it, it, the the uh, power module's reading is 12.49 and we're actually reading 12.49 as well so we're reading ok I'm just going to go to flight data and also it shows it here 12.51 so what you can do in initial setup is this number at the top here you can actually say if you are reading 13 you can enter it and it'll change the voltage divider and it'll it'll try and match the voltage to that voltage that you're reading. So if you go back to twelve so if I go back to twelve point four nine the battery voltage matches that. So that's the battery voltage calculated, so the divider's been adjusted to fit. So then if you go back to your mission planner, you should see in the bottom left here that you should be matching on the voltage, which I currently am. So the next thing to do is to adjust the amps per volt. So what you need to do is you need to actually get the power module to read something. So you actually need to start your motors here so be careful that everything's clear. What you need to do is you need to get the um, the current draw, which is the top left on this watt meter, to around 10 amps. 
So we're just going to arm the cop to it, which I've just done. Oh no, I haven't armed it yet, I just need to switch my control on. So I'm going to arm the copter, and I'm going to bring the current draw up to 10 amps. And then I'm going to adjust the voltage, volts per amp, to try and get it to match the 10 amps that's showing on the watt meter. There you go, so we're running about 10 amps on the watt meter and we've adjusted the amps per volt down to, uh, to, to match that. So we'll just go for another test flight, test run again. Yep, so we're right on there, that's very good. So, the next thing to do is to do the motor, uh, uh, the compass calibration. So for this, you just go down to compass motor calibration. So basically what it's going to do is it's going to take the data from the power module and it's going to see how much interference that causes at different levels to the magnetic field. So for this, you're going to you're going to actually be doing a bit of, you're going to actually be working on the magnetic field so if the copter can move around then that's bad because that will in turn affect the uh, reading on the on the mag magnetic field. So if it, if you cut, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold it with my hand just in place. So you go to the next screen and press start. What it'll do is it'll tell you that it's that it's starting the calibration. So this is going against current because I've got a power module. If you haven't got a power module then you can just do this and it'll just use the throttle position and use the actual throttle position and then just decide how much interference there is at that point. So you can just do this straight away if you don't have a power module. So first of all arm your copter again once you've pressed start and then slowly Raise your throttle up from 0 to 25%, wait there for a few seconds, then 50%, then 75 then 100 and then bring your throttle back down very quickly. Okay, here we go. That's about 25%, pulling, pulling 2.4 amps. Now we're going to go for 50%. Calibration successful. Air interference was, looks like it was 29% there. So that's about it. So the next thing we're going to do is going to set up our flight modes. So we're going to go back into mandatory hardware and we're going to go to flight modes. So on my 
on mine. I've already set these up, but I'm just going to go through them with you. So I've gone for stabilize, loiter, out hold, circle, and then right at the bottom, uh, return to home or return to launch. So on my controls, you watch here, on my sticks, so if I flick here, I'm going to loiter. Let's flick that down further, going to out hold if I go back to the top, flick the one to the right, going to circle, then back into stabilize again, and then into return to return to launch. Pre -arm. Need three D -fix. Pre -arm. Need three D -fix. So that's just telling me that I haven't got three D fix on my GPS, so I can't use them modes at the moment. So, but when you go outside, um, it'll get GPS quite quickly. So. I've put the GPS on mine, but it's pretty easy. It's just you plug it straight in. If you use the uh, if you use the the parts that I've listed in part one, and then that's about it really. So we're just going to go outside and give a test flight on uh, the different modes. I'll try lighter first, then we'll go for a return to launch and see how that works. Hopefully it goes okay. All right, we'll see you later. Right, so just before we go flying, I just wanted to show you a couple of parameters that uh, you might need to change depending on what you want to do. So basically, we're going to just have a look at the return to launch action of the copter. So if you just connect your copter and then go into uh, conflict slash tuning. And you'll end up at this screen, flight mode, you want to click full parameter tree. Make the bit bigger so there's a lot of settings in here that you can play with but there are quite a few uh, self-explanatory and some aren't so you have to look on the internet so if you go down to RTL and you've got an RTL altitude here so you can change this to what you want so basically this sets at what altitude the copter returns to you so I've changed it to a thousand there so that's a thousand centimeters, so that's 10 meters. So the copter will return at 10 meters. Or you can say 15 meters. But I set mine to zero because that actually just returns to you at its current altitude. So it doesn't go up or down and then start to return to you. It just sets straight off returning to you um, at what? At the current altitude. And the next one is. Uh, let me just have a look here. It's waypoint your behaviour. So the waypoint your behaviour basically is how how does the copter return to you? So I'm so that means that say if the copter's facing away from you and you say return to home, it'll just re return to home. So it'll just reverse to you basically. So I want mine to actually face me when it returns to home which I've actually already had got set from my uh, from my tricopter which is this setting here which is 2 so if you set it to 0 it just won't change it'll stay in its current position and just reverse or do whatever it needs to get back to you so then you can have 1 which is just face next waypoint and I want 2 face next waypoint um, so what we want is three so it wants to face along the GPS course so that means it'll face where it's where it's heading for so that's them two have been changed as you can see they're now green so what you need to do is you need to press right parameters in the top right and then that will write the parameter to the board and then what I like to do is refresh the parameters and just go back and check that they are uh, all set correctly.
and there you go, they're still set correctly. There's, just scroll back down, which so is the return to launch is there, which is still set to zero, and the waypoint right here is still set to three. There's lots of other things you can set. You can set how long the copter waits over the home location before descending, and how fast it comes home. All this is in the Arduino Copter website. If you just put RG, uh, RTL modes APM into Google, and it'll take you straight to the website. So we'll see you at the field. Right then. So what I've done is I've switched the copter on, and I've left it for a good five minutes to get GPS lock. So now we're just going to give it a test on uh, loiter first, and then we'll try return to home. So just take it up to about twice your height, so about six metres, and we'll see what happens. So as you can see there, there's something not quite right. So we're just gonna have to have an investigation and see what was wrong. It was just swaying backwards and forwards when I uh, switched lighter on. So we might need to do a little bit of PID tuning, auto tuning, so I'll have a look what I can do. Twist the lens. Oh. 